Hi folks, we love using this Lakeshore Carbide 20 degree high performance engraving end mill. It's one of our favorite tools to use. We use it for all of our Saunders Machine Works logos. We've used it on job shop work in the past and stay tuned for another video on engraving things like stainless steel that have a reputation as being a little bit more difficult to engrave. And the reason I love this tool is the engraving looks great and the tool life in our experience has been just insane. If you pick up the double end version as well, it's effectively $12 per engraving edge, which is phenomenal for a high quality carbide tool. Here's what I wanna to fix today. I've used this tool for years and in Fusion, I have always modeled it as a chamfer tool. So I selected chamfer mill, I put in the 20 degree angle, diameter of the tool a quarter inch, and then we know that the tip diameter is actually 20 thou, so I can update that 0.02, but this is still wrong because this is not a flat tipped chamfer tool. It actually has a 20 thou ball on the end of that tool, and that is absolutely key to the performance of this tool. In fact, before we used this tool, we had been almost exclusively engraving with a 364 ball end mill. I like this even better. So how do we get Fusion to model this tool correctly? Let's leverage the CAD side in Fusion to show how we can do that. Sketch, create a sketch. Doesn't really matter what plane. We're just using this to get some dimensions. C for circle. Click on my origin, and I'm gonna sketch a 20 thou circle. That is the tip of my tool. If you double click on your mouse wheel, if you have a mouse wheel, it'll zoom you into scale because that's a pretty small diameter. Well, that's that really small tip right there, and it comes out to a quarter inch shank. So what I'm gonna do, zoom out a little, sketch rectangle, center rectangle. Sketch it anywhere in space, and I'll dimension it as 0.25 inches wide, and the length of it doesn't really matter. We'll say one inch for now. This looks a little funny. Let's use some sketch constraints to fix this. So I want the center of my rectangle to be directly over the center of the tip of the tool. So I'll hit horizontal vertical. So long as I'm relatively close, meaning it's almost over it right now, it'll snap to it. If you had it the wrong way, say if you had it down here, it's gonna snap it to horizontal, which is obviously not what we want. And now I can drag it directly up because what I'm not sure of right now is the distance between the tip of the tool and this area right here. Zooming back into our, the tip of our tool, hit L for line. I'm gonna click anywhere on this circle. And now here's the key. If I hold down the shift key, that's gonna create either a perpendicular or a tangent line. And here I want it to be tangent. And what I want is that 20 degrees. If we look at the Lakeshore product description, you can see it's 20 degrees per side. So that means this is 90 plus 20 or 110 degrees. I don't really care about the length just yet. So I'll click to place that circle. Again, the important thing is I've got the 110 or if you wanna see it listed as 20 degrees instead of 110 degrees, we can do that. L for line sketch a line that's directly vertical, change it to construction line, D for dimension, and now I can place the measurement between those two and we can see it's telling us that that's only a output because we've already fully constrained the angle of it, but that gives us the 20 degrees. Do the same thing on the other side, L for line, hold down the shift key, click somewhere on the circle, come out here in space. This time I'll place it without applying the angle and I'll apply the angle afterward. I'll click the 20 the equal. What we don't know is how long these are. So let's just drag them such that they're longer than they need to be. Click the coincident constraint. Click uh, the corner right there on our shank. Click this left edge. And if we did it right, we should be able to go to sketch, trim, click on this edge and that edge. Oops, so we got a problem. I expected it to be coincident, but if we look, this line is still blue. Blue means it's not fully constrained. So if I zoom in, sure enough, I can move that line around. So a couple ways we could solve that. It looks like I just didn't get that tangency constraint. If I click tangent and I want this line to be tangent to the circle, that should fix it. And sure enough, that appears to have fully closed this area in because it's now shaded. Sketch, trim, I can trim that off. So that's the profile of the tool. We need to grab a few dimensions off the tool. Let's take a look first at what those will be. Tool library, 
new mill tool, and this will be a tapered mill. So I need the flute length, which is the length from the start of the flute to the tip of the tool, and we need the diameter. The diameter is what confused me. So hopping back into the CAD sketch, we edit, sketch, I need the distance from here to the tip of the tool. I find the easiest way to measure to the outside of a circle is to sketch point. Point's not going to snap to, so I'm going to sketch it intentionally out of place, horizontal, vertical. And now, D for dimension, distance from there to the tip, gives me the 0 0.3242. Now, at first, I thought the diameter was either the diameter of the ball, 20 thou, or I thought it was the diameter where the tapered flute tangentially intersects it. Both of those would be wrong. It's actually something else. L for line. We sketch a horizontal line, and we need that line to be tangent to the tip of our tool. We'll turn that into a construction line. I then need to extend the taper to meet that edge. Go to Sketch, Extend, those two. The diameter that we need is what's called the virtual sharp, or the distance between this point and that point, 0 0.014. We'll hop back in to manufacture, tool library, new mill tool, tapered end mill. We know the taper angle is 20 degrees. We know the diameter is 0 0.014. Now I can already see that my holder is starting to really distort the scale of the tool. So let's just delete that for now. Corner radius 0.01. Shoulder length 0.3242. Foot length would be the same. Body length doesn't really matter. If you're worried about collisions between the engraver and part of your workpiece, you could have that represent the stick out of the tool. I'll say one inch here. Overall length, three inches, and the shaft diameter is a quarter inch. There we go. Corners match up perfectly. And if you notice, the taper type has two different options, bullnose to ball. If we switch between the two here, the difference should be negligible. Sure enough, it added a couple of millionths to the diameter. That's what I couldn't figure out before I had some help. Shout out to CJ at Autodesk for explaining that virtual sharp and why these two, for me, wouldn't recognize. I created a box on this surface. Let's go and use a 2D trace, pick that, and we'll offset the trace by negative 10 thou, which is that distance again from the center of the tip. And what we should be able to do is actually kind of cheat here and use the simulation, drag it along, and wait till it gets close, like there, zoom in, I'm going to turn off my body. I don't want to see that. Gotcha. I just want to see the tool sketch. And, as we zoom, and if we get them close, there'll be some limitations because of the triangulation or tessellation of the tool body, but we can see that looks right. That certainly passes muster. So folks, hope that helped. We'll include a, a version of this F3D file on the NYC CNC website if you want to grab that tool definition to use on your own. And stick around. We've got some videos coming on more engraving recipes, both with this tool as well as a center drill. Take care. See you soon.